Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about nested if statements in Power Automate Desktop. Let's go. So let's talk a little bit about why this episode is important. When we have local tools, the, one of the downsides of using those tools can be that it's difficult to represent business logic in a scalable manner. So for example, we can have many if statements that take up a lot of real estate in our designer. So not only does it make it more complex to essentially read or try to understand all of your logic, it also creates complexity when dealing with the else scenarios because if you have a lot of these if statements, you have to be able to handle what is the alternative path for each of these particular scenarios itself. Now, one of the things that we're gonna to show today in the, in the video is how we can use an expression in Power Automate Desktop to reduce the amount of real estate and simplify our exception scenarios. Now, I do wanna call something out. I previously recorded a video on how to do this using Win Automation. And I recently had someone reach out to me saying, hey, I'm trying to use the syntax from your previous video in Power Automate Desktop and it's not working. And so part of the, the rationale for this video or the why I chose to do this video was just really to go ahead and see, okay, what is the difference from a syntax perspective between Win Automation and Power Automate Desktop, and then naturally provide some more up-to-date content so that if other people have similar scenario, they can go ahead and leverage this mo model instead of the other one in Win Automation. All right, let's go ahead. Let's jump into a demo to see this in action. Okay, so I'm in Power Automate Desktop. Just a very simple example in order to illustrate sort of what are the challenges with sort of a traditional approach and then how we can go ahead and simplify our overall experience here. So I've got just two variables. One is called amount. It's going to be set to 100. Then I've got a variable called state. It is set to AZ for Arizona. Now, what happens if we want to go ahead and perform some sort of evaluation of both of these variables in order to then execute on the if path itself? So what I really want to be able to do is say, if amount is equal to 100 and state is equal to Arizona, then go down a specific path. Otherwise, go down a different path itself. And so oftentimes people will start out by saying, okay, I'm going to just do two nested or a nested if statement in, in inside of another if statement. And so I can go ahead and start by saying if amount is equal to 100, then if that's true, I'll create another if statement saying if state is equal to AZ, then I'll go ahead and say, okay, uh, my condition is true here. But the challenge with this is now I need to go back and say, okay, I need to handle the else condition for state being equal to AZ, but then I also need to go ahead and handle the else condition for when amount is not equal to 100. And so as you can see in a very simple example, I'm starting to take up a bunch of real estate and I have to manage all of these exception paths. Now, if you went ahead and added say a third or fourth variable to your overall condition, naturally this does not scale well at all. And so alternatively, what we can do is have just a simple if expression and then as part of that expression, what we can do is use essentially an operator of and here. It's to say, if my amount variable is equal to 100 and state is equal to AZ, both of these have to be true in order for my overall statement to be true. And so that's where we're gonna go ahead and take advantage of equal to and then use a Boolean operand of true here. And so this will allow me to simplify things. Now, just in case you're curious, back in the Win Automation days, what uh, they used was two ampersands to represent this. And so now what's gonna happen if you try to use that syntax, you're going to run into an error uh, message here. So what you wanna do is use and, and then similarly, if you wanted to go ahead and have an or statement, you could go ahead and use or here. But for our example, we're gonna go with, with and. So that's how you get around the syntax itself. The other thing is notice this is a variable and this is a variable. We want to wrap the entire operand statement inside of these percent signs. We don't want to try to have uh, percent signs around every variable um, like we've seen in other examples. Um, that is going to lead to a syntax error once again. So let's just go ahead, we'll cancel out of this. And then what's gonna happen is if this is true, then great. If both of these values 
the conditions are satisfied, we'll display uh, a true message, and then otherwise we'll then display a false message. So now I'm just managing this in one place. Perhaps I had so, some additional conditions I wanted to consider, maybe a couple more variables to throw into the mix. I can then deal with that exception or that alternative path in a single swim lane, as opposed to having to deal with now even more nested loops. So this only becomes more messy as you add more variables into the mix itself. So let's go ahead and let's just go and run this and see what happens. Okay, so both of our conditions were satisfied. So we have amount equals 200, state equals AZ, and then life's good, we display a true message. Now we'll come down here, we'll run our same expression, and then what we're gonna get is you know true. So that was the shorter path. Now let's go ahead and just um, change this up a little bit just to see how it behaves. Let's change this to 200. And what we're gonna do is we're going to run, and naturally this condition wasn't satisfied, so now we're gonna hit this piece of logic itself, and then same thing here from that perspective. Let's just go back, let's change this to 100. And then let's go ahead and change this to say Washington State. And then we'll go ahead and run this. Then we're gonna hit this particular branch of logic. And then, you know, otherwise it's much more simplified. So I hope, you know, what you're getting out of this is you can actually make your code or your configuration more manageable, but also easier to, to read as well so that you don't have to, figure out which of these alternative paths it's taking. Now, there might be some circumstances where you do need that, but I think in general, if you're trying to save some real estate, you can use the expression I had showed you here and really be able to join these statements and then make sure that the collective operand statement is true and then manage it from, from that perspective. So not super uh, mind boggling or earth shattering, but is something that has uh, come up before. So I just wanted to go ahead and share this use case here with you. All right, thanks for checking out another video on the channel. If you're not following me on Twitter, I'd encourage you to do so. At Where's Z is where you can find me. Uh, naturally, you're on YouTube, so appreciate you checking out this video on that platform. But uh, likes, subscribes, and comments are always welcome. Go ahead and take care of that. So with all that said, we'll catch you next week, and thanks for tuning in. Take care. Bye.